to put a bit more accompaniment into your playing, but do so in the right hand rather than the left hand. Let's uh, extend on Easy, uh, Easy On Me by Adele. Um, which we've done in the past. Let's uh, just assume that we're doing a very basic melody in the right hand, a very basic accompaniment in the left hand, and be very black and white about it. This is what a lot of people will do. They will put chords like that, which is nice, you know, so you can definitely do that, and you can still do that on top of what you're about to learn. Uh, but really, uh, we want to extend our right hand now and develop our right hand um, to a point whereby it can actually fill in the gaps a little bit because between here and the melody There's quite a lot of space quite a lot of keyboard here that's being untapped into And if you were to do other types of accompaniments such as down below here Then it extends even more if you were to play the melody higher Then there's definitely a lot of space That, that can be there and, and explored so the first thing that we need to do to be able to get you to be able to, to do this is just a few little exercises uh, to make sure that your rhythm is okay and you're going to be able to do this. So what we can do is uh, vamp chords or intervals underneath notes in the same hand and have these notes at different values. So for example, use your little finger, uh, find the top note of any chord. I'm going to use the chord of F because that's what I'm in. Um, so that's a C and then use fingers one and three as you would uh, to use the to find the other two notes of the chord and then your top note is going to be held down as fingers one and three vamp underneath it and then at regular intervals you're going to lift that finger up and what you can then do is switch between fingers five and four bit uncomfortable maybe but that's okay and then alternate between the two fingers on different notes to give a bit of melody it doesn't matter what the note is you're getting used to just moving here that's all okay so once you've uh, once you've established that you're happy with that you know keep practicing that once you've established that once you're happy with that <clears throat> then you can move on and what you can do is start to develop uh, a little bit of right hand accompaniment. And all the right hand accompaniment needs to be really is just padding out that chord a little bit more. So basically you're just finding whatever chord you've got in the left hand and you're doing it in the right hand. Now, the trick is that when you're, the lower you are with the left hand, the more that your chord needs to be spread out. So if you're in the left hand, you're playing F, you can get away with a nice triad there but the lower down you get playing it, the muddier it sounds. So if you're playing it very low like there, then do it more like that, spread out the keys more. Um, but when you get higher, like where your right hand will be playing, you can actually afford to uh, spread out there. Uh, you can actually afford to play the keys closer together because obviously they're higher register, so they don't clash quite the same way. So what you can do is do that basically is play the chord just as you would the triad and just play the note on top of it so for example whatever you, it doesn't matter what you're doing in the left hand just find the chords and keep it moving so that's all I'm doing and the only, the only thing really that you've got to just bear in mind is that occasionally the melody might want to sort of find its way to a note that you're already holding down, such as here. I'm already holding the A down and I'm working down to it. So it's just a case of sort of lifting it up at the right time. When it comes to developing on from that, what you can then start to think about is putting um, much... Once you feel a bit more confident with that, what you can then think about doing is uh, filling in every single gap for every note because uh, you can always sort of refer to what your left hand's doing for the chord that you want to do. And in the right hand, the note that you're playing might not be a note within that chord. So it's always a good idea to just get used to playing notes with that chord underneath. So for example, if you're playing 
the chord of F in the right hand, in the left hand, but you're playing a G in the melody, then get used to playing that G with an F chord underneath it, like that. And then what you might find is that because of these two notes being right next to each other, you might go, oh, that sounds a bit clashy. So take the F out and just let the G be the one to ring out on its own. So what you've got is texture going on in the right hand, but it's not clagging together. You've got some nice breathing space for that note there at the top. 